Hello, and thank you for supporting our planet work. This is CD number two in the series, Insights from the Other Side. On this CD is a live presentation entitled, Why We Have Already Been Saved. Topics include the end of karma, transcending fear as the world seems to come unglued, why we are becoming new creations, and revelations about our near future. Okay, let's get started. Yes? I know you think in the, in the guidance <clears throat> system that we are in the process of being born into something more. Were you showing what that something more is? Yes, and uh, uh, quite interestingly, it's much simpler and much more natural than a lot of spiritual people, uh, New Agers and philosophers, have, have uh, been guessing at, really. Um, what we're about to be born into is, <clears throat> when I say we haven't been born yet, the Earth is like this egg, of which it is a whole living system. And uh, this is long before I knew what Gaia was. I saw this on the other side. I saw the Earth as a living being, a living being, of which ever, each and every one of us is a part of the system, the human beings being the part of the system, almost like the brain cells, the part of the system that knows that it is, you see, and is reflective, has a sense of history and time and that sort of thing. The other parts of the system, and we have a very narrow view on, on Earth right now, the human beings, of what life forms might be, actually. To imagine an entire planet as a, as a, as a life form, let alone, I was shown the entire solar system is, is our body, our solar body. And uh, uh, to, to imagine a solar system, which I'll be talking about tomorrow in the workshop, is, is your larger energy body, and the, the energy of the, of the universe is yours too. But basically, what we're about to be born into is something rather, rather marvelous. It really is. We're just getting to the level of mass of consciousness, mass of beings on the planet, mass of brain cells, as you might say, that we're about to, and we're the first part of this system, the Gaia system, the Earth system, that will transcend survival. Up till now, everything that we've been doing from the one cell amoeba to the present life you're living today is very, very, very centered around survival issues. Pay, you know, in human systems, pay the rent, pay your bills, get a job, eat the animal system that they have their levels of it, all the way down, all the way down the entire system. We have millions and millions of years of this kind of activity, vibration, um, patterning in our every cell of our body is, is survival oriented and pushing towards that. And that's why as we evolve out of the animal system into a higher form of consciousness, we're going to, uh, with technology, as I saw on the other side, technology, Wisdom, population density is very, very important to the picture. Very, very important. We need more humans on the planet than we, than we do now to, to get this optimal density of, of brain cells so you can wake up. Um, you have uh, an order of magnitude of cells in the brain which form a certain form of consciousness allow you to perceive the universe in a certain way. Uh, it's a very, very special thing that we have here. But all of us are about to realize as we grow, as we expand now very, very rapidly, and it's really keyed into the population expansion, very, very much, much more so than anything else you may have imagined. Uh, as we rapidly get to the right density, we will suddenly realize, as many of you already do, that every human being on the planet is the same human being. The same human being. And it's actually a marvelous system of all these brain cells that can look at each other and explore the universe in their own way and collect information and grow and add to the huge database which the human, human species has been building since day one of our, our inception as a human being on the planet. We've been building and building a huge experience and database that is now about to pay off. We are going to transcend very soon, in cosmic time especially, don't even blink, you'll miss it, it's so close now. For many of you it's as close as probably your next breath, it could be. Most of us certainly for sure are close as your next incarnation. This world in which the humanity has transcended survival mode of existence. And secondly, we're also transcending biological limits. We're doing it every day more and more so. Human beings are very good at that. And what that is, is that we are Gaia. We shouldn't separate ourselves from Gaia. We are part of this planet that is transcending. This is what Gaia does. Um, uh, you can see out in the desert what, what humans have done. If you come to a desert and rearrange it into a garden, and in that, in that garden bed, grow anything they want to grow. 
were absolutely an amazing being. I love being this part of the system. And from what I've seen, I love being any part of the system. But to be the human part of this system or the human part of Godhead just blows me away to even think about it. If you, if you can understand the blessing that it is just being here now, no matter what configuration you're in uh, as a human being, just being human is absolutely an amazing blessing to you. Um, as I've said before, I thank God every day on top of my food chain. <laughs> that, that alone makes things a lot easier every day. So uh, this, is, this is the first stage of this, that, that's about to happen. But as we transcend survival, we, we, we are also processing fear out of the system. And this is what all of us are facing big time today. And we've talked about this before uh, in groups that I've been with. Fear is really being processed heavily today. And in, in many, many ways, there's more therapy going on on the planet than ever before in history. It's a detoxification of the human psyche that's happening. And in cosmic time, incredibly quick, when you can think of millions and billions of years, and things are happening in, in light speed now compared to the rest of the system, compared to how trees will evolve a million years from now. Human beings will outdo that in just 10 years. It's amazing what we're doing. We're, we're light beings, and we're living at light speed, and we're transcending. Gaia is transcending. Uh, and this is what we're being born into next. The next level of higher consciousness, as I saw it, is the ability to not repeat the past, all the mistakes of the past, which many have interpreted as the end of karma, which is, which is starting to happen en masse now. People are not wanting to be like their parents, not wanting to repeat the past, they're dissolving old, uh, old constrictions to the system, because the Gaia system, in all of its systems, from, from, from atoms all the way up to human systems, wants to be unlimited. And anything that limits the system gets into a lot of trouble. It gets disintegrated. Anything that limits you will build up and build up until you're disintegrated and let go of it. And how many of us are going through that at this time in history right now in our lives? Tremendous disintegration on all levels. Things are happening so fast we think we're going crazy sometimes. We're also, as, as, as and I've pointed this out to scientists that I work with, with every human being that's born on the planet, the system gets wiser. With every brain cell that adds to this system, no matter what it's doing, don't think what it's doing is important all that much. That it is is the importance. That it is living in the system. We'll, we'll harness this potential and blossom it in the future when we realize how special this human consciousness is. When you really understand it, you're going to want to seek it all out, save it, cherish it, rehabilitate it if needed, and bring it whole into the system again. Prisons in the future are going to be light centers. Light centers. Because there's a chakra problem with people. And that's something we'll be talking about in the workshop. How the, how the chakra system is your interface to experience. By that I mean the chakra system is your interface into what we call life. From subtle to dense energy, from spirit to matter. And we'll be talking about this in great detail. Um, our science has been working from outside in. And now you know we've gone from uh, uh, biology to uh, cellular biology to molecular biology. And now into quantum biology. Bio biology is energy. And now we're really going to make some headway. Once we get down to the core of our being, which is an atomic being, and subatomic being, an energy form is what we are. Absolute energy form. The thing is that in the modern world, in the blinking of an eye, the last 200 years or so, mankind has come in from the light, and we're light beings. And so things are turning around now, this great need for the light, this, this light and everything around now, this light beer, lollipop, pop, 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 how many people know here uh, know what I'm talking about when I talk fifth dimensional? That's a term. That's First dimensional is big bang activity, basic construction of the universe, two uh, D reality. Second dimensional activity is when the uh, photonic particles started forming. Three D is when our three D world formed. All of these atoms and, and energies coalesced into a physical form that we recognize today. And everything in our in our space here is based on a three particle atom, and that atom is an iron based atom. And where does that come from? dead stars. So every, every atom in your body is basically from a star system. Many, many millions and trillions of star systems that are beyond, beyond memory even, that have coalesced and re-coalesced. And the, uh, the yogis would call it the yugas. This is, this is another yuga that we're into. We've been in many yugas. In fact, I saw on the other side that there are many big bangs going on at the same time. Many, not just one. 
and we're still just trying to deal with the one. We have an infinite number of them going on at the same time in what you might call infinite Godhead. And so 5.4D is when you start getting into a recognition of patterns and cycles. Plants, animals have a taste of this. Humans especially are very aware of a past, a present, a, a future, uh, cycles, patterns. We, we are the type of consciousness, and it's very mental, by the way, uh, that the far end of fourth dimension, which is what we're in now, and crossing over to fifth, is a very mental realm. And, and that being uh, a human being is, who is made of, of, of the atoms of dead stars can figure out a technology and look at a star and tell you what that star is made of and then figure out that it, it's made me. Isn't that an amazing form of consciousness? To be this, this, interest, this interface with the whole universe? It's absolutely amazing. 5D, which is what we're moving into very, very rapidly now, is the awareness and maddening to some people that all the rules are correct. That in the end, when everything has been said and done in this universe, everyone was right. I figured that one out. Everybody's right. <laughs> That's a mind blower. More than that, the fifth dimensional awareness means each and every one of you is getting infinitely more psychic than you've ever been. It's just building up and up and up now to a point in which uh, if, if the energy is building up to a point in which if what you're in is not right for you, you won't be able to stand it anymore. So don't resist it. I say, you know, let go and grow. Let go and know now. It's a time to let go. The ungluing of the system is happening. And it's not going to fall or collapse because it never has. It always reincorporates and comes up something new and, and beautiful. So an ungluing of the system is happening because that's the only way growth can happen locked up, especially in our mental and spiritual systems. Uh, how many religions have, has got, have got God locked up? This is God, and that's it. Mm -hmm. This book is God, and that's it. God, I, uh, all, the universe is unlimited and unrestricted. And we're just coming into that phase now where we even can begin to think that way. But it's a kind of an awareness where you go into an instant knowing now. You don't have to figure things out anymore. If you're still trying to figure it out, it's going to beat you. Because most of the universe, most of Godhead, is a non-intellectual process. We've needed it to build up technology which is going to assist us in our, in, our, in our transcendence, physically, as well as spiritually. But most of the universe is a non-intellectual process. And so if you try to interpret the entire universe through a mental mode, you're going to fall short. Way short of a full, full understanding of, of the universe and life itself. So in fifth dimensional reality, you're more psychic than you ever have been. You're going to be hearing things and seeing things more than ever before. And I, everywhere I go, people, people talk about this. They think they're going crazy. They think they're seeing things. And the truth is, you are. <laughs> you are. And they're for real. We're going, we're going into the consciousness of a fully multidimensional interface. Because once we've reached fifth dimensional level of consciousness, that is the gate to the multidimensional interface, to the cosmos. And so things are widely, just widely opening right now, and wildly for some people. So I say just hang on, trust your life, don't get too mental anymore, and just get into instant knowing. The higher self-contact now is going to be the real big thing that everybody's going to be getting into. A super consciousness, the higher self, which is the guide through this transition period that we're going into. And fifth dimensional awareness, and when we get there, there's no fear. Can you imagine a world without fear? Can you imagine a human being? And you, many of us may think we've met them, but I saw them in the future, your future ancestors. Without fear, them, they're different creatures. They're that, that new creation that's been talked about. You know, It's a new kind of a being. Can you imagine a world in which nothing's taken away from you? That everyone is very important to the system and it's realized. When we start realizing each and every one of us is the same being, then we really start waking up to the next level of higher consciousness. It's not about transcending our physical bodies. It's not about going into uh, starships and all that. Oh, some of that will be happening. And, you know, great. <laughs> you know, see you around. But that millennium that they've talked about is really a metaphor for this, this new creation time that's coming in. When the human species is, is detoxified into a new vibration, into a vibration where fear doesn't exist. And you, you won't be able to take fear with you in the full fifth dimensional awareness. That's why you're having trouble with it right now. It does not exist there. If it did, if you can imagine what your mind-body does to you now, the relation, what you think, 
your emotions, those to your immune system. Just think, if you're infinitely more psychic and powerful, what would happen? It just doesn't exist there. I didn't see it. It doesn't exist there. And that is something well worth hanging on for and living for. It really is. And what's amazing is people of the future look back at us as the giants of history. We are the giants of history. We are the ones who transmuted fear into the new creation. And uh, how many of you noticed that your children don't seem to be that interested in working anymore? <laughs> this is one of the signs. Don't be too hard on them. It's going to get more and more that way. I was probably one of the first to say when I came back in 82 that there'll never again in history be as many jobs as there was once before. That's because the Industrial Revolution is over. The hard work of mankind is over. Jobs are going south so they can have their revolution and get up to speed with the rest of us. But we're rapidly moving into a non-industrial society. Non-industrial. Now for us, who have become industrial animals for generation after generation, it's almost unimaginable to think, how could a society work? The answer's in your children. They're the ones forming this new society. So be good to them. They're going to be your parents and grandparents. <laughs> so think about it sometimes. <laughs> yes. So when you say we, could you clarify that? Because what pops up for me is say people in Rwanda right now. Yeah. How are they included in this process as you perceive it? When I say we, I mean the entire planet, the entire human species. Um, there are what there are different levels of that being, of being human. Um, there are worker bees, they're the, uh, they're, they're the ones who bring in the visions, and they're the motivators. And the whole system is complete in the human system. Um, I was thinking today as I was driving past the fields and seeing all the workers in the field, I was thinking, this is what holds us up. You know, people that grow food for us, children who are our future, the trees that breathe and clean the air for us. This is what holds us up. Without that, what well, would you even be thinking about higher consciousness or any of these luxuries that we have in this human world? When I say we, I mean all of us. And when we realize that, and the military has already started the transmutation into a service organization to rapidly get help to where it's needed. Right now, children starving and people being hurt in Rwanda is like your foot, like your foot rotting off and you doing nothing about it. We're about to wake up to that and address it and realize that's a part of us, our body, our literal body, part of ourselves that we need. And again, in the future, it's not going to be so much what you're doing. That's not important. The importance is that you are here. Can you imagine people looking at you and just you being here is the best thing in the world? It doesn't matter what you do anymore after this time. Being here is a good thing. Do what you want. That's why we were given life. To make of it what we will. And we're just beginning to get the trainer wheels on. Way do we get the trainer wheels off? <laughs> and really get a hang of this form of consciousness that we're evolving. Because we're all children right now. Babes, we really are. And all of our human systems reflect that. Our monetary system, our legal system, <laughs> our, our energy distribution systems, our, our economic systems, all of that are the, are the systems of children. children. But we're about to mature as a species. So the next level of higher consciousness is just that simple. It's about growing up. It's good. We're going to be as different as adults are to children. As adults are to children. And if you'll notice, in all of the living system, the larval, the baby stage, is a very short period. Most of your existence is going to be in the adult stage, and that includes in your spirituality and in your future as a species. We have a very, very long adult period ahead of us. Very long indeed, because we're, we're very rapidly transcending biological limits. Very, very quickly now. More, 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 more quickly than many of you may imagine in your own time. In your own time, it's happening all around you. But it's coming in, this is coming in, in in the oddest ways. It's not sort of coming in from the top. It really isn't. You know, Bell Labs and all that, they're sort of getting pieces of it. I'll give you an example of how it's coming in, and, and I know many of you have experienced this. I was in Houston this last weekend doing a talk down there, staying with some very nice people in a house that was sort of a community house for spiritual people. And I came down uh, one morning, and uh, getting a cup of coffee, and I, I saw some women sitting around the table, and they had their little notebooks out. And these were women that were just normal people, just normal folks, you know, absolutely normal folks. And what, they, what, what I heard started intriguing me. And I walked over, and I'm looking, and they're comparing notebooks of visions and information that's been coming through them. And it's amazing scientific information. It's transforming information. And I travel a lot, and I see this popping up now more than ever. Common folk are getting it. 
It's not going to be held back by the top at all. They'll get it. But then governments and religions are always the last ones to change. People change first. Then religions change to match it. And governments do too. So it's coming in big time. So I encourage any of you, you get these thoughts, these ideas, write them down, and document them, get together with other people. Because what I saw at this table about energy forms and about great information really thrilled me. And then I looked at these people. None of them had any expertise in the field whatsoever at all. And that's just one way, one sign to you that it's coming in big time now, really big time. And the more fear you feel, feel in your life is a resistance factor. We have to learn now to let go. We're going to be safe. The entire human race has made it. We've made it. We've already been saved. And we saved ourselves, and that was the whole thing, the whole plan anyway. The second coming is when you realize that. You take that big breath. You say, we've made it. We have more technology than we can possibly use. We have more food than we know what to do with. And believe me, there's more money out there than anybody knows what to do with in that energy form. We've already made it. Our systems will mature into this reality. that every human being is very special and deserves the utmost quality of life. And we can afford that now. We could not in ancient times without technology and the wisdom of the modern times combined. But now we can. Now we have it. And we're about to realize it very, very quickly. In our own life, our children's life, there's nothing in the way now but excuses and old patterns holding us back. Those old fear patterns. If I give away mine, what will I have? We're going to find out if we give to each other, we're going to have more than we ever thought, ever, in this life. So, any other questions down here? So, what you're saying then, without this work that we're going to letting go of the work is that it's just happening automatically. That's the best way. You're in an automatic mode of growth that's absolutely fantastic. The only thing that can distort that is your fear, and fear manifests on all levels. It'll impact your immune system, it'll affect your money. It'll, the fear, the fear issues of survival is what the same issue makes one man rich and another man poor. It makes one man really overwork and another man not work at all. The same issue really when you boil it all down. So, another question? Back here? Yeah, I'm really interested in what you're talking about with technology. I just read a book by Hutchinson called Mega Brain. And he, he talks about a lot of technology after this was written about six years ago. And it's everything from biofeedback to, um, to uh, light patterns that match brainwave activity. And it seems like all the different technologies that he talked about centered on helping people develop certain brainwave patterns like alpha and mm -hmm. beta. I'm not really clear exactly. I'm sure it's a lot more sophisticated than I can say. But I'm just curious what, when you're talking about technologies for children and all the technologies for adults, what kinds of technologies are you talking about? Um, in the future or now? Now. I mean, he proposes that we're on the threshold of the expansion in consciousness and that he's really interested in the, the technologies because he thinks they're going to facilitate that. Um, exactly. Um, it's going on in every level, from weapon systems to drug use. And I went to a conference of scientists very recently, and they've been discovering uh, certain parts of the magic mushroom they've been exploring. I was thinking, this is amazing. They're in the laboratory exploring consciousness, finding ways to use that to help people, to toys, to whatever. I'll, I'll get back. You know how weapons are transcending right now? weapon systems on the planet at Los Alamos and those other places. The whole focus now is stun weapons, not to kill people. To stun people. That's, that's, that's higher consciousness in one sense. Uh, children are into more multi-dimensional stuff than we ever thought. Just look at their toys compared to the toys that we had. You know? When I came into the world, TV was rather new. A new medium. To your children born today, it's like nothing. They've got computers they're going into. And those are opening up net neural networks across the entire planet that we didn't have access to. Across the entire planet. What a child can do today is a lot more than what Einstein could do in his time. So you see how things are evolving very quickly now. The knowledge base, just in medicine alone, is, is quadrupling like every four years. The knowledge base alone, in just that one art, uh, so each year, the, the arts and sciences uh, and the education system that we have today is really a dinosaur system. It was, came in the inception of the Industrial Revolution to promote the Industrial Revolution, and it was well needed. 
It brought people in, though, from the light. I'll be talking about a lot of that in the workshop tomorrow, how that has affected each and every one of you, and then how we successfully, generation after generation, have been born with low chakra activity, low chakra activity, how, how uh, chronic fatigue syndrome is the modern disease of light beings being starved for light. And we've developed systems and ways that we can show you in the workshop to get your energy back up. Because we're all low on energy right now. All human beings in this modern world that live indoors, work indoors, eat indoors, and do everything indoors. We're energy beings. And so in the blinking of an eye, we've come indoors and it's really affected the species. If you can see the time lapse movie like I saw on the other side, you can see that the Industrial Revolution, this great coming in of doors, is, is like a, it's like a day, it's like in one day we changed the whole way of being in cosmic time, and we're having the reactions, generation after generation now. And when we start addressing this, mental problems are disappearing. I'm amazed uh, when, we, uh, when we use these systems on humans, how many different levels are affected when the energy is up. Because my whole theory behind all the technology that I develop is that the universe is self-organizing and self-correcting, and you're a universe. You are self-organizing and self-correcting. All healing is self-healing, all healing. No matter if you go to a healer or the hospital or whatever, you're getting energy attention. Energy attention. All healing is self-healing. Why most people don't heal is that they don't have enough energy to trigger it. That's why with these lasers we can we can focus on a wound and it speeds up the system without any harmful side effects whatsoever, without any drugs whatsoever. The system heals itself with the optimal energy in the system. The human body and the human brain is state-of-the-art equipment. It's like every one of you was given a Maserati. But, you know, most of us, the battery's dead and we're out of gas. Oh, yeah. We're pushing the thing. We're pushing the thing. <laughs> so, luckily, luckily, all this can be easily turned around when you address the energy body. So, if you address the cellular and molecular, it's going to be real slow. Real slow now. Again? <laughs> Here we go. You, you talked earlier about um, the growing uh, sacredness and understanding of, of each other in human life and so on. But, we all experience these days, I think, as we see, is a growing disregard for human life. I mean, people are blowing other people away for just giving them a dirty look, and, and the kids themselves are doing it too. So, what's what do you feel that's all about? Well, as I saw it, why are children shooting at us? Is they're trying to get our attention. <laughs> they haven't got our attention. Our education system is failing. And getting back to that, our education system is a dinosaur system predominantly set up to, to make you, turn you into a, a consumer and producer. Yeah. Yeah. Classes are graduating from college every year, there are no jobs for them. Colleges, schools should be now reoriented into human skills and how to be great humans. You see? Why? And that's one reason why they're shooting at us. Another reason is that, add all that up together. When, when, when a human, whether it comes from a middle class, high class, or, or ghetto family, when a human senses, for whatever reason, there's no hope, this human becomes dangerous and critical. They are volatile. A hopeless human being is, is a dangerous creature. Dangerous creature indeed. So we need to address the hopelessness out there. There's a lot, there's a whole part of our, our segment uh, of our population around the world that's not really clued into what's going on with the rest of the population. They're, they're just, we're, we're just letting them languish away, this great potential of human spirit languish away. Um, secondly, as I saw it on the other side, you add up all the wars mankind has ever had, and it's a thimble compared to the rest of the system. You spend one night in the jungle naked and you'll know what I'm talking about. I was shown this on the other side, because I asked that. I said, why are humans so evil? Why are we just so screwed up? And I saw that we're not at all compared, depending on what you compare it to. Ants have had more wars over <laughs> millions of years than humans ever will have, ever will have. That's just one part of the system. Think about those nature films where a mother has to guard its young all night. And get, you know, all night and all day just searching for food, food, food. I would rather take my chances in New York City ghetto, honestly, than one night in the jungle naked because everything's food there. Sure, we still reflect the animal system. We still prey on each other. There's still prey-predator relationships going on. The human system is infinitely more graceful just on that level, the violence level. Now, to compare human violence, to call it evil or bad, is, 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 is we're part of the Gaia system. We're part of a system. To call humans evil is to say the same thing that a lion that chases down a gazelle is evil. 
We're the same system, except we're going to transcend that. A lion will hunt a gazelle for a long time to come. Humans will not hunt each other that much longer and pray once we address the greatness of the human character and re reconfigure our education systems. And the rehabilitation of the human race is enormous already, enormous. And we're already infinitely more graceful system. I would rather be in this system than even the atomic system. You see? So I, I maybe that gives you a little perspective on what I saw. Mm -hmm. Can I help with that a little bit, that question? Mm -hmm. Melon, what can we do to transcend our fear more quickly? Well, we're going to be talking about that a lot in the workshop tomorrow. Basically, we need a higher consciousness is going to take higher energy. A lot of spiritual people haven't seen that. I saw it on the other side very clearly. Luckily, that's going to be really easy to do. It's not, it's not work at all. The work is over for mankind, really. The hard work is over. Now, the school of pain is going behind us. The school of joy opens up. The future is about the school of joy. The sign for you is that if it feels like work, reconfigure it. Or do something that doesn't feel like work to you. Find something you can have some passion about in this world. Also, understanding that everything that you do, whether you're uh, the bag boy at the grocery store, or the genius on the computer, or the wino in the gutter, all has an important place in the whole system. Again, we're going to start forgetting it's not what you do, it's that you are. That's the most important thing. It's what you are, it's that you're here. That's the most important thing. And so, uh, uh, to transmute fear, there's, there's many ways. So the first thing I always tell people is to breathe. <laughs> breathing is one of the best ways. Deep breathing. We'll, we'll be going into some of these exercises tomorrow and showing people how, how breathing alone can help you transcend fear and also purge the system of negativity in a very interesting way. Um, and we're going to have Patty Mann there tomorrow. She's going to show us some of her very special uh, uh, techniques that she's developed. Uh, it's going to be interesting. So um, there are many ways. Uh, the good news is there's an infinite number of ways to do it nowadays. And um, I, I've, I've said this before, but since 1985, I've been blessed to be able to go around the planet and pretty much look into whatever I want to look into, which has mostly been about healing, from the Philippines to, to you name it, to technology. And one thing I've noticed around the world is that I've seen people healed by holy men, holy water, holy women, holy places, holy trees, and holy moly. I've seen holy moly work. You know, putting your hand to the TV screen for that preacher. Dot your heel. Grab a mirror. That's what I do. I go, I'm going to get some of this. You know, if it's that. If it's real, I'm going to get some of it. And you'd be surprised how much comes through. It's very really interesting. That, that, that minister at that moment might be just in the right energy configuration for you to get it. So my, my estimation is, I think everything works. I haven't seen anything that doesn't work. The trick is, find what works for you. If, if the modality, uh, uh, philosophy, religion you're into really isn't giving you happiness in your life or giving you the desired results that you want, not what anybody else wants, but what you want, try something else. Change the channel. You will find what works for you in all systems. If you'll loosen up, grow, and try something else if it isn't working. Be free enough to try. And that includes relationships all the way down on up. That's the entire system. Okay? Mm-hmm. I've noticed you speak of the future and the present tense. Mm -hmm. You say the future is. Yeah. The, uh, that's fifth dimensional awareness coming in. Um, in fourth dimensional awareness, you have a sense of a past, a present, and some sense of a future. And we understand uh, in fourth dimension that our present affects whatever we do in the future, say tomorrow, the next day, or even 100 years from now. And in fifth dimensional awareness, <clears throat> the now expands and encompasses the past, the present, and the future simultaneously. This is why we're, we're getting into past life regression, future life, future life progression, big time now, more than ever before on the planet. Uh, this is bringing the past, present, and future into the now. Our now expands. The present moment expands. That's what humans are capable of. Um, and as we do that, some people are going to think they're going nuts because they're going to they're be aware of, of, of voices. This could be past life stuff playing back. That they're going to see maybe visions, which could be your, yourself interfacing with yourself, actually in a multi-dimensional interface. And this is why I think many ghosts are. You're actually seeing an aspect of yourself in the past and the conditions in your body, the atmosphere, everything's just right to trigger the veil to be pulled open and you get to see these things. In fifth dimensional awareness, one of the big things that we realize is, and I saw this clearly on the other side, was that now we believe that <clears throat> the present is changeable. And if the present's changeable, then obviously the future must be changeable. But in fifth dimensional awareness, the past is changeable. 
It's all changeable, and it's all, as I saw the movie on the other side, it's all been changing. All the past is changing, the present's always changing, and the future's always changing. It's a very dynamic, simultaneous system. Uh, Seth called it, I think, uh, uh, one aspect that I experienced was simultaneous reincarnation. I experienced that on my re-entry in, into life. Uh, I remained conscious through that, through that, uh, that episode. What I saw <clears throat> on the other side is that when most people go to the light, their energy faints, their energy faints. And so they go through the rest of the process rather unconsciously as an energy form. And that you're really targeting each other, not so much by names really, because there have been many people many times. What you're targeting is the nearest close matrix of frequencies that you resonate to. And that's why if your parents in this life die and you're reincarnating in a future life and then say they're, they, they have the possibility of being your parents, if they're not mating at the time you're re-entering, you're going to go to the next closest match to your frequency. That's why it keeps expanding. Uh, it's not that we target each other by names and that sort of thing. And in fact, many times when you think you've found an old, an old soulmate, you've found the frequency of that soulmate in another human being. And we all have twins, and we have twin soulmates, and all that sort of thing that's going on. So uh, uh, reincarnation uh, really becomes a science in the future, like archaeology. So that you dig through consciousness and you explore many, many things. It's going on big time in the future. They're, they're doing tons of regressions on you now. So some of the stuff you might be picking up is your own self accessing your neural network and your consciousness in very interesting ways. And you go, well, what was that from? And you may misinterpret it quite often. As, as, as you do past life regression even further back into the past, and into the non-technological age, say the dark ages or whatever, yourself in that time may be aware something's going on and freak out. They may think they've seen God. They may think they've seen the devil. <laughs> they may think they're hearing voices and seeing things. It's a part of this multi-dimensional interface that's going on, this phase shifting. So that it's, it's a very dynamic system. And it's all changeable. And one of the great good news is that we can change the past. None of you have to live with any of the past that you don't want to anymore. And there's many techniques for rewriting your past. I suggest you do it. Rewrite your past to the configuration that you resonate with perfectly. Those situations didn't work out. Write them as working out. Rewrite them. This will affect, as, as, as you change that, you change the past. You also change the present when you let go of that. How many people have experienced this in aggression? You know? That let go, that getting it together finally, that working out on a deeper level of issues. It's amazing. It's really quite healing. Okay, another question? Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the question was, um, again, what happens to animals and people? who suddenly are taken out violently. violently yeah. um, much more serious with humans than with the animal system or trees. They're in a different incarnation cycle than we are. Uh, very, very, uh, very tight incarnational cycle. And there's a grace that happens in that level of consciousness that they don't know they're dying, as I saw it. They don't experience death. They do not know they're dying. They also do not know they've been born. They're in the total now, which is a beautiful place to be. You know, but humans are, are much more expanded. Now, to a human being, to, as I saw it on the battlefield, someone who's hit by a bomb and their, and their body vaporizes, uh, they're still there. I know that when I died, I was outside my body wondering, well, I'm still here. I can think. All of that seemed to be still with me, but I, I, wasn't, I was outside my body. To people in war, this happens en masse. And it can be quite confusing, quite confusing indeed, and can really slant an incarnational pattern. Because the very frequency at the moment of death really slants your incarnational trajectory back in. Uh, people that were burned at the stake, and I've worked with many of these people, I, 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 I really like working with people that have been persecuted in the past because I really have a way of helping them clear on, on all levels. You know, uh, say you were burned at the stake in the past, and let me tell you, I got to see this in history, that burning at the stake was a very, very messy affair in the old days, if you could really see what happened. The, the beating, the torture beforehand, uh, then if the wood was wet, it could take half a day oh. to actually kill somebody. The wind, I mean, I saw it. it was, and if you die during that, your entire, your entire cellular atomic structure is vibrating at a certain pitch. When, when you die, the cellular memory is carried on through the auric structure. It's a subatomic measurable structure that, trans, that actually survives what we call physical death. The old body dies, the cellular memory in that system dies and goes back to the elements. But the energy of that is carried on right into the next body. And so you can come in with very, very skewed trajectory and chakra damage and all that sort of thing. Um, spina bifida, things like that, I see as part of this problem. 
of incarnating at a very weird trajectory, child abuse, things like that. So um, one thing that's going to become more and more important is birthing and deathing centers. To be born in, born in optimal configuration for enhancement and to die optimally and, and have it be a fantastic non-fearful experience. And the trend now, uh, as I did with myself, is to try to remain conscious through the experience. You can. Death is an interactive experience. When they hit the light, they faint. The energy is so great. It's almost like an eagle grabbing a rabbit. You know, it faints and goes out at that point. It's grace, actually. And so, if you can remain conscious through the light experience, you will be conscious as I, as I was of the entire incarnational mechanics and, and system, which is absolutely fantastic system, beautiful system. Um, so, uh, I hope that answered your question a little bit. Back here. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a question. I've had a mm, heightened experience for a period of time rather than the death of my father, both before and after he died, premonitions, <coughs> visitations, and I have a question about something that didn't make sense, didn't quite make sense to me, and I wondered if you had any questions about it. Mm -hmm. um, the day after his death, I had a dream where he let me know he was tired and he wanted to lay down for a while. The following night, or within a few nights, I had a dream where he was crying and going through a struggle, wanting to re-enter his body, and I was there telling him that he couldn't because it was tired and broken and he could not return, and he was in conflict. Now, do you have anything you can relate to this in terms of coming back within the same body or another and being in that in-between place? You can. Um um, don't limit him that way. I came back into my body and I was very surprised. I came back into my dead body again. It's very, very possible for that to happen and maybe we can assist people in doing that. I saw the metaphor for the whole Jesus Lazarus thing on the other side. And as I saw it, uh, Lazarus was one of the better students who really got the message. And really, um, uh, Lazarus is the one that did all the work uh, of coming back into the body. Jesus was an anchor point and people can be that. This is what my hospice caretaker sort of did for me by staying with the body the whole time, in a way, unconscious way. Um, uh, the kahunas understand this. There are certain uh, rituals and techniques for calling the person back in to a same body again. But the trick is that it's not the shamans that does it, it's you. They're only a, a focus point for you to get back to that point and assist you in re-entry. You do the work. Lazarus is the one who came back to life. Jesus did not bring him back to life. Can I just add one thing mm -hmm. to that? There was definitely something going on there where I was present with my father mm -hmm. much of the time, mm -hmm. up until I took him to the hospital, mm -hmm. left, and it was during that time mm -hmm. that I was gone that he chose to leave. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I guess I'm trying to come to terms with that. I've had some people say <coughs> that it's easier to leave mm -hmm. if there's not that connection there. I know that I yeah. actually physically and spiritually did some things mm -hmm. that kept him around. Exactly. I feel that. I believe yeah. that. Um, and I, I do a fair amount of hospice work myself, and uh, I know that uh, if, if the family is in a certain configuration, not wanting to let go, they tend to hang on longer than they should, really. Um, uh, I always tell people, though, you, you, can, you can get healed on this side or the other side. I get You can always get, don't limit it. Don't ever limit it. Uh, but truly, I, it's quite normal from my experience and what I've seen in the work that I do that the minute you left, you, you checked out, you released him actually. And I can tell you, there's a definite chakra impact when a parent dies because you come out of their system, especially when a mother dies. And I'll be going into that in detail. And many people that I work with, I always ask them that a relative die, um, is your mother still alive? And we can go back and there's, there's things that happen that you don't even associate with your mother or father's death that happen to you physically afterwards symptoms, illnesses, even people that manifest the same illness after a parent goes. And I'll be talking about that in, in detail because uh, it's very important uh, work that I do and that people should be aware of, but it takes a lot longer to explain it than I can tonight. But you can definitely have a tremendous shock or impact as a parent, especially if they die slowly and you're their uh, principal caretaker. And this is something hospice people should look to because it's only, it's an energy thing. It's not about anybody trying to give you anything or whatever. It's an energy thing that we'll be talking about in great detail how that works. But uh, quite common, quite common. Uh, if any of you have lost parents, you should really go get uh, your energy tuned up again. Get some chakra balancing, get, get active uh, to hold off any of the residual of the impact. Also, surgery is tremendous impact on the chakra system usually. And uh, uh, there are people that I work with that we treat them before they go into chemo and afterwards to get that chakra optimally balanced. Thank you. Thank you.
so those sort of things. Okay. Um, okay, back here. Um, I have uh, quite an active dream life. Mm -hmm. I vivid dreams every single night, several. And I'm just wondering about the role of dreams. <coughs> yeah, she asked, uh, what are the roles of dreams in, in the human life? Uh, it's, it's one of the things that's very special about human beings, the dream state. Uh, we're multidimensional beings, and uh, dreams are our way of becoming multidimensional. Uh, it's fantastic what, and you probably know yourself, what people have done, can do in dream states. Actually amazing. From cures to diseases, like Edgar Casey, we go to dream state, to astral travel, multidimensional interface, visiting other star systems. Uh, it's very, very special about us. It's one of the things that, in the rest of the galaxy, humans are really known for, is this dreaming. Uh, and our dreams are very, they're energy, they're real energy, so that you can create and decreate in a dream too. And lucid dreaming is going to become more and more popular now. Uh, in fact, uh, once you realize that this is a lucid dream, <laughs> it's all a lucid dream, and it's all changeable. Uh, what's great about lucid dream is, that no matter what the dream is, once you get lucid, you realize that you can change any part of it, it will. This is how plastic the universe is. And when uh, uh, creature own reality is going into mass consciousness now very rapidly, very rapidly indeed, and when people catch on how easy true magic is and manifestation, it's awesome. It doesn't take work. It doesn't take uh, that much energy, in fact, to manifest. And in fact, uh, uh, in our own ways, we're learning to manifest more and more now. How many people are finding it easier to manifest things? It's just sort of happening. Uh, sometimes it happens when I was only thinking about it. I wasn't even sure I wanted it. So, you know, in the 5D reality, you should really kind of figure it out first or, you know, before it manifests and you have to deal with it. <laughs> so, okay, right here. You spoke of the hopelessness of the educational system for the young people. Mm -hmm. What do you see changing and how can we be a part of that change? For By that the, the, the first thing you can do is be um, very supportive tax-wise to your education system. But more than that, don't just put in your money. Put in your bias mm -hmm. to the system. Uh, the school boards are out of touch. Yeah. They're dinosaurs. The head doesn't know what the tail's doing. The, the basic education system is really configured wrong to uh, really produce optimal human beings. Beings that, are, uh, that really have human, human skills and there's a lot, there's a depth, there's a depth to humans that's not even being addressed in our education system. Secondly, really uh, support your education system, but more than that, make sure they spend the money in the right way. Now, what I saw on the other side was that education and penal systems are going to change and that they're going to go into private hands. And it's going to be cheaper than paying taxes. Mm -hmm. And the government's going to go for it, and you're going to go for it. And this ungluing, when it goes into private hands, which is the trend now, uh, is going to be from now on, is that there, uh, the, the, the systems that are already up and running, like Montessori and Steiner schools and all that, finally get a chance to blossom in a, a, a situation in which anyone can go to, that you can pick the schools you want to go to in the very near future. And it's also going to be much cheaper to operate and much more efficient than the system now. So, so, so Gaia is always laying in systems well in advance. We already have prototype education systems. You see already here that can develop more, but we already have them here. They're already here. So. Mm -hmm. You said you saw in the future in California we were going to be having this what are all these theories about California dropping off? Well, uh, I may be the only one predicting it's not going to. Okay. <laughs> I, I really don't see it happening from what I saw on the other side. Right. And I really don't see uh, what um, uh, these, uh, you know, Map America and stuff, many of you've seen yeah, where it's, you know, yeah, it's all going to be flooded and Denver's going to be like the beach, yeah, the beach you know. Right. <laughs> what, what's happening there, and I go, I go, I go into this in great detail in the chapter in my book uh, on Doom and Bloomers. Um, we, are, we are a tiny piece receptor unit. And all of history in the galaxy is very huge. So we're like this little funnel that it all tries to come through. And many people that are oriented, and you know, there are some psychics that are very good about picking up death, very good about picking up accidents and police cases and stuff, because they're tuned for that. I don't do that at all. I'm not tuned for it. I tried it a couple of times. I'm just not really tuned for criminal cases and that sort of thing, so I don't even bother with it. But there, there are many that do, that are tuned into when earthquakes are going to happen and whatever. They're just tuned for that sort of thing because of their incarnational patterns and issues. Um, quite often, what, what some of these doom and gloomers are saying is going to happen now is they're the funnel, and if you could see cosmic time, we're talking over a long, 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 long period of time, these events may happen. But in the now, I wouldn't worry about it. You see, it's, it's this huge, and they're, 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 in other words, they don't realize that this is, in, we're speaking in cosmic time here, we're not speaking like tomorrow. 
or something like that. So I, I uh, also the Earth is much more stable now than it's ever been if you just check the geology, the geology, the history of geology of the planet. We come from a very violent geology and we're very stable, now, more stable than we've ever been, which is a part of Gaia developing us right at this time in a very stable time in history for sustained consciousness. We're going to need this sustained consciousness. So the Earth is stabilizing. Uh, fossil fuels, okay, fossil fuels were basically a Gaia invention to stabilize the planet from another ice age, because an ice, we're way overdue for an ice age right now, and we've been doing Gaia's work by driving our cars every day, holding off the ice age. Believe it or not, <laughs> Gaia produces more pollution than we ever will. And in the near future, we terraform, and we cha we've changed the atmosphere many times, Gaia has changed the atmosphere many times in, in millions and millions of years. And humans, as a part of Gaia, are going to, this is the Gaia part saying, well, you know, we're going, to do a little, we're going to do a little different now, a little more focused. So humans will reconfigure the atmosphere again. We have the technology. It's, bur it's beginning to burgeon right now, the technology to have optimal atmosphere in, on the planet system. So uh, basically, I have to go now. I want to get rested up, and I'm getting the sign. So thanks for coming, and we'll do it again sometime. Hello, this is Melon Thomas, and I hope that my insights from the other side will in some good way inspire you to love your life and this miracle planet that we share with all of Gaia's children. We are all, in so many ways, blessed beyond measure. Thank you.